Hi guys and welcome to another video by Chum Vegan and Frodo. So in today's video I'm going to show you how I've created this I think awesome tabletop. It is one of the very first bigger pieces I've created just for comparison and for idea. Just give you an idea. I have a measuring tape here to see how big it is. Ninety. So it's almost one meter long. Now this work has been interesting. My very first time trying out something this big. Like I said, I definitely have learned new things through doing a piece of artwork this big, and just to kind of have an understanding of how much product goes on top, how much you need to mix, how quick you need to work. The leveling definitely makes a big difference of the picture to ensure that you do get to keep the pattern or the sort of things the effects that you want on it at the same time when you're storing it to dry to harden up it's really really important that nothing gets into it because i've had that experience from like a fly flew into it through the night and then got trapped in it and i had to basically resand the whole thing put another coat on top it changed it a little bit, put a clear coat on top. But just to give you an idea of what it looks like, there's this really cool but not too like intense cells that are just like forming over here. But see you get this glitter and this deep kind of to gloss and get some lacing through the picture and it inter is intermingling with the purple see I just love this stuff Look how, I think it's just very deep very just very unique and I know it just mesmerizes me Because it's sort of like, you do have control over it and you kind of help it become what it needs to become. Because you do have a sort of a control, but then it still changes the way it wants to change. And I'm just like, I love these like cells forming. Anyway, if you're interested in my little lessons learned and a little, a little bit of the process of how I've created this. Please keep on watching. So for this project, I'm starting off with the wooden circle, but it was brown. So I just went over it and painted it using acrylic paint and white. The paints that I'm using are the Matisse White Acrylic Titanium white titanium and I'm just like using a little bit of a hint of this sparkly beautiful silvery medium although I don't think it's necessary all I wanted to do is just basically cover the whole thing absolutely stunningly white and then I will wait quickly while it dries it's an acrylic paint so it'll dry fairly quick and then we will be doing resin art epoxy all over it so because this piece of artwork is so large, I had to make sure that I have had sufficient amount of resin to be blended. So first of all, I really had to make sure that I had at least one, I actually ended up blending 1.5 liters, preparing 1.5 liters of epoxy resin using my epoxy cast bonds resin with part A and part B mixing them together two to one. I guess one of the bigger challenges is well first of all keeping the entire surface absolutely completely straight just based simply because the setup that I have at the moment my table is actually smaller than my working art table is smaller than the table I was covering tabletop I was covering which added a bit of fun and I guess difference to it and then also mixing really really well the epoxy cast in the larger containers so once i have mixed it 
thoroughly and I was happy with it. I started separating it out into all these different empty cups to be able to mix them with my pigments. And I wanted quite a few different colors. I wanted to test it out, what, what I could come up with and just try my best really in this creation process. So here you can see I'm outlining all the products that I'm going to use. I'm adding the creamy pigments from Barnes. I'm using the powdered Perlex powders. I'm also using the Liquitex inks as well. After mixing all the colors thoroughly, I remove all of my products from my tabletop and start creating. As you can see, I am sort of layering the paint and creating this really, really awesome dirty pour effect. Absolutely, absolutely in love with it at the moment. So all in all, analyzing the entire process, it, to cover the entire tabletop, which is about one meter or 90 centimeters in diameter, you'll need about 900 mils of epoxy resin, epoxy cast resin. Although you do remember that you might want to be mixing just a bit more to have extra for the one or another reason. It takes a while to cover the entire surface. I think it's incredibly important to keep your canvas or tabletop in this case completely straight because as soon as there's some sort of tilt, that pattern that you have created there will become something else. And sometimes it becomes something beautiful, usually it becomes some, something very beautiful, but you can also be a little bit sad because it just doesn't look quite the same as it did previously. But I guess at the same time, you just need to be appreciative and happy with what it turned out at the end. So here I found it a bit of a mission <laughs> with the excess resin kind of pouring over the sides. Of course I wanted the resin to go over the sides because I wanted the sides to be covered in resin, have at least a certain level of resin on top. So here you can see I already left my work setting up and at the same time I created a few different other pieces of artwork. I have a couple of coasters, I have a CD, 
I have an old picture frame covered in resin just because I had spare resin and I wanted to see what I can create with the remaining amount of the resin I had available to me with pigments and it creates really really cool effects on its own and if you're into purple and blue I reckon you'd think this is pretty cool really makes me think of the ocean and there's loads and loads of cells building through the entire picture which I think is really really cool a bit of a challenge with an artwork this big is definitely storing it I think when it's drying you just need to make sure that there is some sort of cover on top of it to ensure that no little bits of hair no insects no dust will dry up and fly into it while it's drying mm. and nothing will drop into your picture and if it does it's not as big of a deal all you need to do is slightly sand the top lightly sand the top layer get rid of whatever it is that's on top of it and then put another clear layer on top of that so your design will remain unchanged and at the same time you will have a beautiful top layer i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you picked something up from it and remember as always create from within your heart Thanks for watching. Bye.